Before we start, this video does contain major story spoilers for Sea of Solitude, so don't watch it if you haven't beaten the game yet. At the heart of Sea of Solitude's narrative is the ever too familiar theme of human loneliness, an emotional state that can send a person's life spiraling out of control if they get lost in that perceived mindset. The game has us experience protagonist Kay's journey to cope with her feelings of loneliness as she fights to reconnect with her family and learn to let go of certain situations. It's a very poignant and relative tale in 2019, as isolation and feelings of loneliness are common symptoms of not only those who suffer from the ever-increasing number of cases of depression and anxiety, but also for those who don't deal with mental illness at all and are just unhappy with where they're at in life. With so many people being affected in today's world by loneliness, Sea of Solitude's story beats become immediately familiar, and sometimes one of the most powerful motivators is to know you're not alone and that it can be overcome. Because of the positive message this game leaves you with, I think it's important that we use it to better understand the mental state of Kay and many others. So today, in this episode of Psychology of Gaming, the series where we look at how psychological principles are worked into games, and how games can affect us psychologically, we take a look at loneliness, its effects, and how Sea of Solitude creates a visual and narrative dedicated to overcoming it. Before we can begin to look at Sea of Solitude, we first must establish a basis for what loneliness is within the psychological community. So let's be clear, loneliness isn't categorized as a mental illness on its own. Instead, it's a common symptom associated with many other mental illnesses. This makes loneliness much harder to pin down as its causes, effects, and potential cures will vary from person to person depending on their situation. Loneliness then becomes something of an odd concept because it can look and feel so different from person to person, yet when you tell someone you're lonely, they almost always know exactly what you mean. The point I'm trying to make is that it can be a pretty vague topic to discuss by nature because it has to encompass so many situations, causes, and effects from person to person. But that won't stop me though from doing my best to talk about it and explain it from the psychological perspective. Loneliness is a feeling humans experience when they perceive themselves as being socially isolated or alone. Take the emphasis on the word perceive because the feeling of being alone isn't always based on your physical surroundings. Many people report feelings of being lonely even when they're surrounded by people. For example, at a party where they don't know the other people, and those other people already have their own defined social circle with its own roles. On the other hand, other people have no problems with feeling lonely while around others, but feel it intensely at certain times throughout the day. Simultaneously, people may feel lonely for different reasons. A teenager may feel alone after his family moves to a new state, meaning he loses touch with his friends. A middle-aged woman may feel lonely after a string of first dates don't get her anywhere, and an elderly man may feel alone after the passing of his wife. Either way, it's a result of a person's desired levels of social interaction not aligning with their reality, and it can wreak havoc on a person's life. Feelings of loneliness can materialize in many different ways, including poor decision-making, depression, infrequent sleeping patterns, suicidal thoughts, and drug abuse amongst other things. In other words, loneliness can destroy a person's life physically and mentally. According to one study conducted by Julianne Holt Lundstedt, a PhD in psychology and professor at BYU, significant periods of loneliness can be more damaging to a person's health than smoking 15 cigarettes in a day. 
This may sound shocking, but these malignant effects are a result of a person shutting down mentally and physically while feeling the effects of social isolation. A lonely person is less likely to exercise and more likely to withdraw from social interactions as feelings of loneliness quickly branch into thoughts of low self-esteem. But hope comes in two forms. First, people who are lonely aren't alone in their struggle. Second, there are steps that can be taken to overcome loneliness and break the habit of social shutdown. Sometimes just reaching out to someone while you're feeling alone can be enough to alter your mood or mindset, but if your loneliness is ever present, then overcoming it will be a lot tougher, but not impossible. This requires a complete shift in how the person with loneliness thinks about the world around them, and again, this relates back to the fact that loneliness is a perception of their life. Perceptions can be changed, but it takes time and serious effort for those who are really suffering. It requires emphasizing strong relationships with the people around you, working hard to identify positive changes you can make, learning to accept and embrace your current situation, and putting yourself out there regardless if it means confronting your demons. And these are all things we see Kay do throughout Sea of Solitude. Kay's experience throughout the game is about her recognizing herself sinking into loneliness after a relationship ends, as well as her journey to overcome those emotions by re-establishing familial bonds and learning to understand the people around her. She starts the game in a perfect visual for the theme of loneliness, alone in a boat that's lost in a vast sea with storm clouds all around. That is, until a bright light grabs her attention and gets her moving. A shining light in the dark is often used to create a visual representation of hope, and at this point, hope for something better is about all Kay has. Her boyfriend and her have just split, and her fixation on that relationship led her to not seeing that her family was falling apart. But now she is about to embark on a mission to re-establish her family, and there will be highs and lows along the way as she confronts the emotion of those around her as well as her own. You see, in Sea of Solitude, people who are lonely become literal monsters, and Kay is beginning her transformation at the game's opening. Throughout the journey, she encounters monster versions of her brother, mother, father, and ex-boyfriend, as well as monsters that represent her various emotions. Kay's first goal is to re-establish her connection with her brother, who succumbed to a lonely life after being bullied by just about everyone at school while Kay was too preoccupied with her boyfriend to notice. Kay is forced to recount old memories of times in which her brother desperately tried to get her attention, but she wasn't ever fully there with him in the moment. Luckily for her, she has a chance to right the ship and reconnect with her brother and save him from his despair. She does this by digging deeper into his fears and ultimately setting him free, which allows their relationship to start anew. They both win and take one step towards alleviating their loneliness by creating a quality bond between them. Kay quickly has to learn though that not every situation and relationship can be saved and sometimes Loneliness has to be viewed as a chance to start over, and this lesson comes in the form of her parents' failing marriage. Both her mother and father have become so sick of fighting that they have transformed into monsters themselves, feeling completely isolated within their union. Kay naively believes at the beginning that if she can just get her parents in the same room to talk about their struggle, then it would result in them being happy once again. She takes on the mountain of responsibility that comes from attempting such a task, and eventually it compounds her feelings of despair as she hears her parents arguing with one another. However, eventually her parents come to accept that it's better to let go because even though they love each other, their relationship is beyond repair. It teaches Kay the valuable lesson that sometimes we just have to recognize our efforts have failed and that growth can come from letting go and getting a fresh start. Kay has now learned not only how to repair familiar relationships, 
but also how to recognize when a romantic one is beyond repair. After realizing that saving her family wasn't enough to transform herself back into a human, Kay must face her most daunting demon and lesson yet, and it comes in the form of a confrontation with her ex-boyfriend. This section gives us some more insight into Jack, Kay's ex-boyfriend, and we see that he too is clearly suffering from mental health issues, as he's clearly becoming unstable and losing touch with reality. Kay does everything she can to try to save him, and by extension, their relationship. But Jack ultimately decides that things need to end, crippling their relationship for good. This sends Kay into an extreme bout of sadness, as she is completely engulfed by her negative emotion, and it's here where Kay must learn to not feel alone, even when she's by herself. She does this by confronting her inner emotion, and all the companions that have helped and hurt her along the way, including the whale monster who sought to eat her at every chance, the young girl who was a representation of Kay's happy self, and finally the shell monster that acted as a depressor on Kay's life in order to get her to maintain the status quo. By confronting these different parts of her psyche, Kay is able to set herself free and finally find peace within herself without having to rely on others to overcome her loneliness and this allows her to appreciate her life even more. In the end, loneliness can be a haunting condition, but it's important to remember that it's all a perception within your mind. Oftentimes, there are relationships in your life that can be re-established and reconnected with to help aid you, but in the end, we as people have to put in the time to better ourselves and our own lives. Sea of Solitude allows us to experience this journey for one such character, and I highly recommend checking it out. Anyway guys, that does it for this episode of Psychology of Gaming. If you want to see more on the game, go ahead and check out my review, it's linked in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, please leave a like if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing for more, follow me on Twitter at NopeNapNarp, and as always, have a nice day, and take care.